In this video, we're going to conduct hypothesis testing and then interpret the coefficients. Now, because we've been able to verify the five assumptions of the linear model, meaning the error term has a mean zero, constant variance, the errors aren't uh, the errors are independent, the errors are normally distributed, and the model's linear. Uh, the validity of those five assumptions make the T and F hypothesis test we're about to do valid. Okay. Now, the difference between a T test and an F test is in an F test, we're testing whether the slopes are all simultaneously equal to zero. In T testing, we're testing whether the slopes are individually equal to zero. Now, remember, these are the estimated slopes or coefficients not the true values. We're never going to know the true values, but we can we can uh, estimate the coefficients, which we've done here. Okay. Now, since the estimated coefficients are the best information we have on the true coefficients or slopes, we use them to compute the t-stat. And the t-stat is just simply the estimated coefficient divided by its estimated standard error which in this case is 4.071. And then in this case, down here for x2, the t stat is the estimated coefficient divided by its standard error to give us negative 3.678. And for, for variable x3, the t stat is 3.443 divided by its standard error, which is 2.747. Now, an interesting thing to note here is that as the t stat as it, now, this, this t stat is the furthest from zero. Of the four, this one is the furthest from zero. Then x2's t stat. Then x3's t stat. And finally, then the intercept's t stat. The intercept's t stat in this case is closest to zero, which means the p value is furthest from zero. So the closer the t stat gets to zero, the further the p-value is from zero. The, the further the t-stat is from zero, the closer the p-value is to zero. Okay? So what we could say here is that x, of the three variables, x1, x2, and x3, the most significant variable is x1. Okay? Now, if we're using a significance level of 5 or 10%, these three p-values are all less than 5%. So we can conclude that the true coefficients, the true coefficients individually are statistically different than zero at the 5% level. What that means is x1 is a significant predictor of winning percentage. x2 is a significant predictor of winning percentage, and x3 is a significant predictor of winning percentage. Now, the F test is kind of a related test. Instead of testing the coefficients individually, like we did, the, like we did with the uh, T test, we're going to test whether they're simultaneously equal to zero. And because these T stats are so large collectively, and these p-values are so small, collectively. The F statistic is very large and its p-value ver is very, very small. Okay? Since its p-value is less than 5%, less than 10%, even less than 1%, we can say the model is significant at the 1%, the 5%, and the 10% levels. Okay? Which is exactly what we concluded individually. We concluded that individually the slopes were all non-zero. Okay? So now let's move on to in the interpretation of the coefficients. I'm going to hide that stuff. I'm going to hide this too. If we're an average NBA basketball team, we're going to make 43.5% of our shots, and we're going to win 50.2% of our games. Those values are from our descriptive statistics table. Now, if we can shoot one percentage point better, we're, we can raise our shooting percentage from 43.5 to 44.5.
Now, the should raise our winning percentage. How much does it raise it by? To answer that question, we look at the estimated coefficient of x1. And what this coefficient says is, if, percent, if shooting percentage increases by one percentage point, winning percent will increase by 4.817 percentage points. So our winning percentage will rise from the average of 50.2 to 55.0. The way I calculate the 55.0 is I added the average MBA winning percentage to the coefficient. Okay. Okay. Now, if we're an average NBA basketball team, we're going to hold our opponents to 34.1% behind the three-point line. If we're average in every other regard, we're going to win again 50.2% of our ball games. Now, if for some reason we start playing slightly below average defense, and as a result our opponents increase their three-point shooting percentage by one percentage point, their three-point shooting percentage will go from 34.1 to 35.1. Now, if our opponents are shooting better behind the three-point line, we're going to lose more games, which makes sense, right? If we got two seconds left in a ball game and we're playing weak defense behind the three-point line and our opponents are down by two and they hit a three, they're going to win that ball game. So this makes sense. So the question is, how much will our winning percentage fall by if we play this weaker defense, which allows our opponents to raise their three-point shooting from 34.1 to 35.1? To answer that question, we turn to X2's estimated coefficient. And this number implies that if our opponents shoot one percentage point better behind the three-point line, our winning percentage will drop by 2.589 percentage points. Hence, our winning percentage will go from 50.2 to 47.6. Again, if we're an average NBA basketball team in every regard, our opponent's going to turn over the ball 15.2 times a game. If we're average in every regard, again, we're going to win 50.2% of our ball games. Now, if our coach can get us, play, get us to play a little better defense, just enough that our average number of turnovers that our opponents commit goes from 15.2 to 16.2. We're going to have one more opportunity during the ball game to maybe make a layup, which might decide a ball game. So it makes sense that our winning percentage should go up by, go up by some amount. Now, what amount does our winning percentage go up by? To answer that question, we turn to X3's coefficient. And this number implies that if we can turn the ball over, if we can get our opponents to turn the ball to turn the ball over one more time per game, our winning percentage goes up by 3.443 percentage points. So we can raise our winning percentage from the average of 15 point or 50.2 to 53.6, and to compute that number, I subtracted the estimated coefficient from the average winning percentage.